Stu from UAV Futures here and today, well, uh, we've got something that I think a lot of people are going to love in this hobby. If you want to get into FPV or you are looking to get somebody into FPV, we kind of have the perfect little gift package right here. It is the Esheen Novice. It comes in this very fancy, pretty case right here and check this out. Everything you're going to get in here, we've got 10 batteries, a radio, some goggles and a tiny little pretty much Lava X clone that's in here and a charger, enough to get up to the races, rip around and have a good time FPV. So if you've ever wanted to jump in, this is possibly the time at a super cheap price when you don't have to break the bank, you're still not sure if this is a hobby that you want to do full time or you're really not too sure, or you might just be a, a bit of a kid on a budget. This set definitely has you covered. So I'm gonna put it in the roof cam. What we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna break it down. We're gonna look at the text and the specs of the goggles, the radio, the drone, which is actually a pretty kick-ass little drone, the charger, the batteries, all that sort of stuff. We're also gonna go out to the Field, rip it around, show you what to expect, talk about the pros and cons of the system, where its shortfalls are, where it's great, and you know, especially coming in for the price. Like, I think there's two versions for the $140 to maybe the $160 because one version does come with a ton of extra batteries, which, trust me, that's probably going to be the one you want. So, if you ever wanted to get into FPV, but price has been the thing that's holding you back, you want a decent little kit that's still going to be a ton of fun, stay tuned because this video is going to be for you. Now, what we're going to do, as a bit of an overview, you can see you get this carrying case, I'll get this out of the way everything does fit nicely in there but anyway that's uh that's not the exciting bit we've got four major components of here plus the battery so first things first probably the most exciting part in this entire kit is this little bad boy right here the novice drone and let me tell you it looks exactly like the lava x we're going to go out and fly it in a little bit but it's got some really cool kit in here like the run cam nano some de decently things like smart audio all that sort of stuff it takes a 2s battery it is ducted so you can fly it indoors you can also fly it outdoors bouncing off walls up the all that sort of stuff. A little drone like this is a perfect, and I really like the name of it, it really suits it, a perfect little novice beginner flyer. So this one's gonna be perfect for beginners. Moving on next, we have the radio, and look, this radio, I'll break this down as well. Uh, it's a very, very simple D8 basic free sky radio. And the beauty about this is too, you can use this drone with your other radios or with your other goggles if you ever want to upgrade in the future. And then finally, the other part we'll be having a look at in depth out in the field is this tiny little pair of FPV goggles, uh, which honestly, it's gonna be enough to get started, but you're probably gonna be wanting to upgrade pretty soon if you are serious about getting it. It just depends how much you love it, and that's kind of where this little kit is at. It's like a taste test of things to come to find out. Is FPV still gonna be for you? Or it might just be a perfect gift for, uh, maybe you've got some kids or a nephew or niece or somewhere out there that loves to uh, see you flying around. This would be a pretty cool Chrissy present. And then finally, the other little bit as well, you get a little charger, which is neither here nor there. You can plug your, bat your XT60 in right there charge your batteries off this bad boy and pretty much you are off to the races. So, so let's do it. Let's break it down. Look at the techs and the specs. We're going to start in. We're going to look at the drone first. Then we're going to have a quick look at the radio. Quick breakdown of the goggles and some of the little extras. And then we're going out the field. We're flying around. I'll show you some DVR. I'll show you my impressions. We'll show you, uh, I think Grumpy Trev's going to be out there maybe. Long range Tony. We'll fly this little drone around with the kit we've got. We'll also test it on some other goggles and find out, I guess, the good parts, the bad parts. Everything you need to know about this little novice beginner kit for 140 bucks. So let's do it. Break it down. The novice Novice drone itself, hopefully this is in shot in the roof cam. It's a tiny little, I guess, Lava X clone. I think the plastic they're using around the outside feels a bit nicer than the Lava X one. It's kind of got this spongy feel to it, so I think it's gonna hold up well in crashes. It's gonna bounce a lot. It's not gonna fracture or anything like that. It takes two S, but you there use these two little 300 milliamp hour batteries, but you could also fly it around indoors if you wanted to on a 1S pack, uh, starting at the outside end, of course, some tiny little tri-blade props, and I think they're 11, 11 no two motors. 1350 kvs on here so look it still should have plenty of pop screaming around in the middle of the drone we've got our 4-in-1 crazy b esf4 esc nothing too special and the flight controller all that sort of stuff a little vtx in there and it is hooked up to smart audio and you can change the power level from 25 to 200 even though when i got mine it was set on 500 in the smart audio i have no idea why that was the case and then at the top of it we actually do have a little star of the show we have the run cam nano and that's where this one's kind of special because for such a cheap kit when you look at everything you're getting uh i'm pretty surprised with the camera that you get in here and also it's coming in super light so if you're worried about weight limits you're worried about giving you know this is a gift to somebody out there who might be a novice flyer excuse the pun but yeah somebody flying around you don't have to worry about them hurting themselves too much because this thing is so light now let me find my scales 
the drone on. It's coming in at about 32 grams there, so a very, very light little quad. You don't have to worry about it. And if I put two batteries on, let's see if we can just do this quickly. With two batteries, it's still coming in at under 50 grams. So a very, very a light little racer that I don't think many people are gonna be worried about in the slightest if they see this thing buzzing around. And it's not too loud either, so it's not gonna to be too obnoxious if you're flying it in a busy park. Moving on to the radio. Now look, this part is uh, very, very generic. I feel like flying this thing around, and we'll definitely see this in the field, this is about, this is as cheap as you can go, and you're probably gonna to wanna to upgrade your radio if you get serious about this hobby. This is just enough to get through, but it's still gonna be better than some of those toys you find in like Walmart or somewhere like that. For the kind of the same price, you're still gonna get a much better functioning little radio. It is D8, so it can bind up to some of your free sky stuff out there. I don't actually know what this is for because I imagine they think you can put a phone or something in that little top bit, but that's kind of annoying. It takes some little triple A batteries. Hang on on the back, I'm sliding it the wrong way. And I'm turning it on. So you can see it just takes some triple A batteries in the back. If I can clip this back in, be quiet, put the throttle down. You've got your on-off switch right here. I think you hold that to turn it off. Yeah, so you've got your on-off switch right here. But I do like the way that it's set up out of the box, ready to go with the modes, with turtle mode, all that sort of stuff. Right here, this is your arm switch, I think, on this side. This side is your bind button when you turn it on. And then up here, kind of on this little shoulder button, I guess you would say, that's where you can flip between stability mode, air mode, and even acro mode. Even though I don't know why they're different things on the, I don't know why air mode isn't just on all the time, but it's nice when you're flying around and you're looking in the goggles, it tells you what mode you're on, which is kind of a nice feature. I wouldn't use it because you can tell when you're using the sticks, but uh, it's a nice feature for novices out there or new pilots. One part I would say though is when you press the arm button, nothing happens on the drone until you raise the throttle. So it has that motor stop enabled, which uh, I would probably be changing. But we'll talk about those little pros and cons towards the end and a lot of things you can do to improve your experience with this. Now, of course, it's not gonna be suited for pinches because uh, it's just a very small, tiny little radio. You could do some little stick extensions, I guess, if you wanted to pull that off, make it a little bit higher, but overall, the, the gimbals, they're super cheap. They don't feel the best whatsoever. It feels like just a cheap PC controller or something. So it's a very, very cheap piece of kit. But I must say, it is enough if you want to get in and have some fun. It's definitely not going to be like your QX7s or some of the proper radios out here. Right here, you're probably looking at a $20 transmitter. So that's something you need to keep in mind when you're flying around. And I will say, it does feel a bit twitchy on the throttle. I know definitely indoors, you're going to need a little bit of practice before you can hover this thing nicely. You get, it's kind of, you get what you pay for and uh, you can expect pretty much uh, some pretty cheap results when you're flying around with this. So don't expect too much, but nonetheless, it still should be plenty of fun. And then moving on to the final piece that I think is really worth diving in and having a look at. We're talking about the Esheen VR005, I think they're the VR, Esheen 005 goggles. And these tiny little goggles are really just a taste test again, I like the radio to get in and have a look. They've got two antennas on the front. It is a super simple operation. So you've got your on off switch, your search function, your band and your channels. It's very easy to go through all the channels. It's got an inbuilt battery. It charges by USB, which I really do like. Hopefully you can see that. You see you can charge by USB. It came with these two little, they're not even foam, like rubber pieces that I just kind of stuck on there. And I think that's to stop it cutting in your nose. And let me be the first to tell you, it is not the most comfortable on your face. So for my big buff head, when I'm putting this on, and I'm sure we'll see what the other boys think as well. I kind of have to sit it, I feel like Scrooge McDuck or something with it sitting over my eyelids like I'm wearing, over my eyebrows, like I'm wearing a weird pair of goggles to get it in focus. It doesn't have a focal range, it's got a small screen, it's low resolution, I'll put it on the screen, I think it's 600 by 240 or 700 by 240, something like that will be on the screen. It's uh, also only got a 2.7 inch display and you're getting about 130 degrees field of view, although I feel like it feels a little bit smaller, but that's what it says on the stats. And look, overall for the goggles, they're just, they're the same as the radio. A very cheap piece of kit. You still can do FPV. You still can have an absolute blast. And uh, if you want to try FPV, you might want to not want to spend tons of money. You just might want to see, do I get sick when I'm 
flying around. Is FPV as fun as everybody's talking about it? You know, or you might just have uh, not that much extra dollars to spend, but you want to jump in and have a kit. You still can have an absolute blast with this. So the other little parts, finally, before we move on, like I mentioned, we've got our little Eshin charger. You can swap between high voltage and also the amps that you're charging at. So you can either charge a normal LiPo or a high voltage LiPo. You can change your amps. It gives a little readout. It can go by USB or uh, also your XT60. It comes with 10 of these little uh, 300 milliamp HV 1S packs that you plug in. And also you get some spare props and you get a little plug if you want to fly it around on 1S. You can simply swap one of these out. You get, I'll get it for you, it's right here. You get one of these little plugs and this is what I'd recommend to do if you're indoors, just simply plug this in. And that way, when you plug your drone in, it's gonna complete the circuit. Now, this is a 1S drone ready to rock and roll. So, I do like they give you those nice little extra features, which is not usually Eshin style. So, on the bench, having a look at the components, I'm gonna say I love the drone. I think the drone is definitely the big plus in this entire kit. Yes, it's awesome to get everything for novices. They can jump in, fly around, but the quality of the drone, and this thing is gonna be a fun little rocket, and you'll see that when we take it out of the field. The goggles on this first impressions, look, they're, they are a very, very cheap pair of goggles, and I feel the same can be said for the radio. Now, if we look at the design of the thing, there's not too much I can say besides it's a kit that thought, well, we want a cheap kit to get people into the market, to get people flying, give them 10 batteries where they can rip around, have a good time, and that's exactly what this does. And then finally, the last bit before I go out to the field, the uh, the quality, I'm happy with the drone quality, but these two, it's just, you get what you pay for. The quality of things for the price that they probably cost to make these or for you to buy the goggles and the radio, yeah, it's great. But don't be expecting, you know, some even something like the Nun goggles, which are reviewed and popped up there. Something like those are gonna serve yourself a lot better, but those goggles are about 80 bucks at their cheapest. For something like this is probably a $20, maybe it's crazy, or $25 pair of FPV goggles and a $20 radio. So don't expect the world when it comes to those two, especially in terms of the quality and all that sort of stuff. But that's it on the bench. What we're gonna do, let's go have some fun. We're gonna out of the field, we're gonna rip it around, we're gonna catch up with the other boys, show you some DVR. I'm gonna record the DVR on my Sky Zones because these goggles don't do DVR, but we will be flying with this. We'll see what the other boys think. And then we'll see, is this kit gonna be the right one for you? We'll come back here, and that's where we'll talk about the pros and cons, the good things about this kit, the shortcomings, and some things that you can do to improve it. So this might be the kit that you get, it might be the gift that you get for somebody. You might love FPV, you want them into the hobby to share it with them as well. You might have a friend say, hey, try this out, get them hook. I'll give you a few little tips that could just make it go that little bit further or some nice little changes you can do or things to do in the future to make it even better. So let's go have some fun in the field in three, two, one. Radio out here in the field. Let's do it with the Ishin Novice. Rip some packs, show you some DVR, which I'll record on the Sky Zones. And I'll also get, uh, Trev can hold the camera for me, get my impressions, looking into these goggles and on the remotes, all that sort of stuff. Find out, is this the right kit for you or is it going to make a good gift kit to get into FPV? So let's do it and have some fun with the Ishin Novice. Hey, look who's turned up. The things I do for this channel. What, what are you doing, Tony? What are you doing? Bringing you the laptop you left behind. Oh, we don't need it anymore. Okay. No, I'm joking, we do. <laughs> you ready to pack up still? Yeah, well, let's go home. Alrighty, put these uh, stylish little goggles on. Got our little radio. I'm going on to F. Two, I think, Tony. I might blow you out of the sky here. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> your head looks a bit big for it. Oh, no, your head looks big for most of the <laughs> All right, all right. I think I'm going to have a picture. I better turn the goggles on. Do you do I have any marks on my face? Yeah, cool. <laughs> I've loosened these up too. All right. I need to find my channel. There we go. Oh, that must have been close. I just... <laughs> Alright, let's do it. Turn my radio on. Got my new uh, high-performance oh. radio, Trevor. Hey, it's ready to go, is it? I Stop. think so. Woo! Hey! Tony's crashing into me. I think one of these buttons is arm. Oh, it's already hurting my eyebrows. Can you my, can you see the yeah, crinkles? Yeah, sort of... Alright, alright, enough rambling. <laughs> Right here, we're ready to rock and roll finally. Everything's set up, DVR's recording. First things first, looking into these goggles, my eyebrows are just getting crushed into the back of my skull. Your eyebrows and... look like they've got a cleavage stew. <laughs> eyebrow. Look at them. Uh, I've got one big eyebrow with a push-up bra. That's what's happening. Yeah. 
and uh, it is a very low resolution screen. So let's take it off, see how it goes. I think one of these buttons, is, there we go, we're armed. And this could be it. Uh, what are we going to go in? Acro mode. Looks good. Oh, right, Tony, did you just plug in? No. No, I'm unplugged. But I will plug in just to see how much fun we can have. No, get out. I, I'm not sure I'm on the right channel too. It's hard to tell with the OSD on here as well. That would have been the wrong channel. Thank goodness. Yeah, the intro's just gone for now. Yeah, okay. the viewers have turned off already. Here we go, here we go. I'm going to get it. I've got it. This is it. This is the right channel. All right, all right, we're away. Okay, the drone feels great. It feels uh, the drone is easily the best part. Of, oh, okay, it's hard to fly and talk, especially with this little radio. You're gonna need. It just takes the most. Oh, and it doesn't have what? It, what's that mode? It Air does. Mode. It doesn't have, yeah, the motor disarming sort of part. So I think we might have turtle mode on here somewhere. Air mode, acro mode, stable mode. I feel like you're really in my face somewhere here, Trevor. Just behind you. Uh, what do these buttons do? Oh, that's armed. Do you want butler mode? Yeah, butler mode, we got butler mode. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Thank you. And you know what I'm going to do right now because we've got Tony's laptop here. I'm going to load on to beta flight and I'm going to enable uh, motor so the motors don't stop in midair. So actually, you know, no, I'll put it in air mode. Air mode should take care of that. Just put it flat, Tony. Air. Yeah, okay, we're going now. Let's see what happens. That's a bit easier to control. But not my, not, 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 not by much. Gee, you've got to look at the stick movements. You really have such a limited range. You've got to be so careful with how you fly and so minute, like I'm a, a surgeon, heart surgery. That's what you need to be able to fly this thing. All right, let's go for a bit of a range test on the goggles and I'll tell you when it starts breaking up for me and I uh, see how it goes. We also might get a range test on the radio. Going down the bottom here. Um, I'm trying to, there we go. I was trying to descend then. My throttle was all the way at zero, but it didn't want to come down. Uh, oh, bugger, I'm stuck in the grass. Time for a walk of shame. I gotta go get it. I'll be back. Look, I'm gonna say it's pilot error, but the controls don't make it easy. So the drone is more than capable, absolutely, of flying around. Look how dirty it was, just, just spinning into the ground too. So Tony's just crashing. So a lot of people are crashing here, but the radio, I'm puffed for jogging down there, is just so tricky to get right. It's just the smallest movement, and you can definitely tell this is a super cheap $20 radio. And do I have marks on my face? Yeah. Probably. On your, on your forehead, so it's not uh, not the most comfortable. But what we'll do, I'll get Tony to fly around as well. I'll record his impressions. And then also I'm gonna bind up the drone and fly it on another radio with a real set of goggles and find out how the drone goes as well. So as my impressions, drone seems really good. Radio is by far the weakest link for me. And uh, the goggles are just, they're, they're not the best either. I'm getting, uh, I guess uh, a sore face with them on. Let's do it. Hand over to Tony, see what he thinks. Radio LRT with the VLT for lunch. What, yep. what did you have for lunch? Uh, meatball Subway. Meatball Subway. Meatball Subway. Subway. All right, anyway, breakfast of drone pilot champions. Yep. Uh, we've got the Ishi novice kit here. So you've got the drone, which is extremely grassy. Yep. The little radio, uh, which you heard me carrying on about. A tiny little bit of box goggles. Now I'm seeing them on your head. It does look a bit ridiculous. And, they uh, look a bit ridiculous as well. Yeah. It's like, anyway, <laughs> like a duck bill. I, I'm not going to pre prejudge okay, anything. Okay, good, Stuart. good. And it comes with uh, a whole bunch of stuff, uh, like some spare batteries and a little charger and all that this, sort of kit. And this is as big as the goggles get. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. And you got a tiny head, like. Yeah, yeah. That's what they all say. <laughs> all right, let's give it a go. Did you? <laughs> oh, I, 
Oh yeah, yeah. Oh wait, wait. First impressions. What do you think before you take off? What, what do, do you I think? think? I think. Yeah. I think the quad looks looks fine. Look, if I look at it in comparison to my mobile, like, you'd be forgiven to think they're the same thing. Yep. It's got so, a run cam nano in there. So, I should say as well. Comes so as far as batteries. as far as that goes, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, this. I guess this is halfway between the really cheap crap ones that you get with the toys yep. and maybe Eternity Evolution. Um, do you, do you think halfway? No, no, hang on, this is, what, this is what I'm sa saying from seeing it for the first time. Okay, okay. Right? And I didn't listen to your review before. These goggles, they just feel like a toy. Um, well, it kind of all is a toy. It's like something you'd expect yeah. to get from Walmart, I imagine, except for, except for that. Yeah. But, but look, you're the, gonna be the judge. Yeah. I just wanna know your flights. And I'm gonna be impressed if you can fly See, where am I going? See that tree there, the yep. fork of the tree? Through the fork? No, you won't. Okay. You I'll fork off. See if you can get around that tree and back. All right. That's the challenge, is that's it? That's the challenge. Or is it going to fail safe halfway there? No, no, there? I, don't, I didn't get All a right. fail safe. All right. Let's give it a go. You give me a battery. Yep. All right. Let's plug two, those two in. Two of them in. Yep. Just. It can also go on one S. Just lazy Susan. They're next to each other. Yep. Yeah. Shove them in there. She'll fit. She'll be right. She'll be right. Might on. cry a little bit. It'll be okay. Just the first time. Um, put that in there. All righty, there we go. All right. Well, I've got a picture, but man, that's ugly as. What that's, do you mean? Um, the pitch. Oh, the camera's good, but the picture is. Um, yeah, run cam nano in that. Super, record. super low now, definition. Now, is this really comfortable? Is it pressing on your face at all? Uh, Does that make it any better? Then you just took my eyeballs out. <laughs> okay. No, it's dreadful. Um, the screen actually looks like it's got a big concave in it. Okay. It looks it looks curved, um, but I'll give you this: it gives you a picture. Yep. So that's more than those that don't. How do I arm this oh, thing? So I think you, you press one of these. This, this one and the other one. Yep. Make sure it goes up air mode. Okay, so like that that's arm. That's armed, and then press till it goes to air. Uh, yeah. Ah. That's see, that's it. pretty okay. cool. That's, I, yeah, do, I do like okay. a setup like that. I think. All right. right. Anyway, yeah. Let, let, let's see. All right, so you know your it, challenge, right? So let's see if it was a pilot issue or a drone issue. You're going to go round. Let's see. There's a tree out there. And, mate, you're gunning it. He's going for it. You got the tree. Oh. What's happening? Where are you going, mate? Where are you going? Around the tree with the fork. Uh, do you know what it is? It's so sensitive on the your axis. All right, Tony, you look like you're getting the hang of it a little bit. Talk to me. Yeah, so it's... What, what, do we want to do goggles, I reckon we radio, need, drone? Let's I, break uh, it down. Okay, so if we, if we go to the, the tune... Yep, the, it, the drone. I think what we need to do is we need to... Uh, tune it out the your axis is is it's got this massive expo on it where hang on, i've lost that it's um it's it's, going. it seems to have it's got no movement no movement then a hundred percent movement yeah but you know what i think that is i think that's the dead band in the radio mate yeah. it doesn't oh it's I'll, still on i better go that's get right. it. what's right. it doing i don't anyway. know it's off now where'd you crash come back what's the problem all right so as far as i'm concerned it's it flies well but I think the way it's tuned up is it's got this massive dead band or it maybe you move 70% of the stick and you get 5% of the movement and then you move that next little bit and you get all the movement in one go. Okay, so, so either that's either two things. Yeah. We're getting a de big bit of yeah. dead band in the radio Yep. or it's got a crazy amount of expo in the tune yeah. on so, the flight so controller. So that, for, for me, it was mainly in the yaw axis. Yep. Um, so we can try playing around with that. You know, um, I didn't feel it was that bad in, in uh, pitch and roll. Okay. But your, right. your so was, quad. Quad, what do you think about the quad? Um, I actually thought the quad had a bit of performance in it. It seemed to have plenty of lift. Um, Oscillations, camera. No, nah, not really. The camera was good. I mean, it'd be nice to try it with some different yep. goggles yep, to see, to see next, how yep. good the, it is. Okay. But it seemed very stable. It was just the controllability using this um, seemed to be more of a challenge. So okay. yeah, I, I didn't mind the drone. Okay, I thought goggles? The, uh, goggles. Um, Look, as a beginner's goggle, it's better than nothing. You know, it gives you a sense of what it's like. Um, I think for $140, it's not a bad combo, but somebody may want to very quickly upgrade the controller and the goggles to something a bit better. Okay.
Okay. And the last bit on the controller, thoughts on the controller? Um, I think if we can get the the tuning of What about the, if you can't? What about if that the drone is fine and if it works we can't, on the radio? If we can't, I'd throw that away. Okay. If we can, I reckon there's potential in here. Do you still think it feels better than a toy radio you were talking about? It, it does feel better than the little tiny white ones that you get with the kids' toys. Okay. I think it feels better than that. It's a slightly bigger form factor. Um, yeah, I, I think it's better than, than a kids' one. Not as good as Eternity Evolution. If we can tune it up, I might give it a second comment. Okay. All right. All right. Nice. What I want to do now, I would like to bind it up, bind the drone up to the radio. Yep. I'm going to bind my drone up to a radio. I'm going to put it on another pair of goggles, and then we can really test and okay. quantify where the problem is and where the strengths are. Let's okay. do that. Radio, this is take two with the little Ishii novice. Except, Tony, what have we done differently this time? We've uh, we've jacked it up. We put it on decent goggles. Decent, decent goggles, decent radio, so we can actually review the drone as well, see how that goes. Oh, we might need some new batteries, though. Yeah. And I'll show you some DVR from these. And Trevor's bugging me. Radio, here we go on board, and the difference is going to be chalk and cheese. You're not going to believe what a difference this thing makes. This thing is absolutely outstanding. We've bound it up to our T16. I've got some Sky Zone goggles on, and you saw my flight before, and I was a bit all over the shop. Look at this. Once we put on a you know a decent set of goggles and bind it up to a cool radio, and that's what I love. This kit, it can grow with you. So if you want to get some extra things in the future, this, the drone itself, is definitely the star of the show. And it's kind of crazy they don't sell this thing separately by itself, but this thing rips around. It's got beautiful colors in the camera. We're getting pretty good reception actually as well, and it doesn't have any oscillations. It handles prop wash surprisingly well, and it is kind of point and shoot. Wherever you point this thing, that's exactly where it's going to go. We did make some little adjustments though, because in the PIDs or uh, on the receiver tab, they had their your uh, degrees per second set up around a thousand, which is absolutely ridiculous, especially for a beginner novice kit. I don't know why they've done that. So we dropped everything to about 600 degrees per second of rotation, and you can see the difference that this thing is making it is ripping around zooming around this little park so if you want to get this kit you are going to have an awesome time and don't think oh the drone's holding me back whatsoever this drone if you've got the skills to pay the bills you're going to be shooting tiny little gaps having an absolute blast turning your apartment your house your little park into an absolute new full-fledged fpv playground where you're going to be able to have a lot of fun now probably one thing i do want to mention to people is if you're going to be flying this around indoors and i'll put some dvr towards the end as well try it on a 1s i didn't i put it on around on a 2s and it is very powerful on the throttle. So you're going to need some good throttle response because otherwise this thing, you can just punch it up. It's going to disappear to the moon because it has plenty of power to boot. But luckily, you get plenty of batteries as well. So definitely, look, I'm hitting this little gap here. A very, very precise little fun fly that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy. It's just held back at the start by those beginner radios and the, by the beginner radio, I should say, and those beginner goggles. But I don't know what you'd really be expecting because those other things are so cheap anyway. And to keep the price down, there's definitely going to have to be some compromises somewhere. So overall, awesome, absolutely awesome drone. And the radio and the goggles definitely at this stage seem to be uh, the the weakest link of the three between them. But I guess for the $145, it's kind of crazy that you can still even get flying FPV at all. But what we should do, let's turn it over to Tony, see what he thinks, and then we're going to jump back to the bench, talk about the pros and cons, and I actually do some upgrades at the end of this video that's going to show you how to make that radio even better. So it actually is going to be a bit better than when we're out here at the park, so you can get more out of it. All righty Tony, let's rock and roll. Uh, pretty much we've bound it up to a... Yeah, uh, we've got the radio. Got jumper T16. You've got it in your goggles. My Let's goggles. Despite you wanting to give me your goggles, yep. I have my Sit own. The they side. work fine. Um, so we're going to give it a go. I've heard rave reviews from uh, somebody who's already done this. I want to give it a go. See if it was the controller after all. Oh, okay, okay. You yeah. tell me the difference between the yeah. controller. Yeah. All right, let's all right, do it. Let's give it a go. So I'm going to get out of your way. Here we so go. I trust you. I'm not going to be reviewing the controller. I'm just be reviewing the quad. The, just the quad. <laughs> Oi! It's got heaps of power, I'll give you that. I've just been flying around on my Mobula 7, which is um, getting quite old. This has got heaps more power. Like, I'm barely doing half throttle, and uh, I do a little punch out. Yeah, it's got heaps. Whoa, look at that. Brilliant. I won't even put it in a tree, Stuart. Thank you. Um, do you feel, okay. I feel very in control of this. I say that now, I haven't crashed it yet. Let, first, Tony. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's yeah. break this down, so. Why you've got the radio in your hands, this radio makes a huge difference. Makes a massive difference. Having a decent radio has made all the difference. Now, I must I must put a caveat on that. 
we did play around with the tune a bit. Yeah, we dropped the yaw as well. So we dropped the yaw down. For, it was factory set at a thousand, and we dropped it to six hundred, and it's made a marked difference to the controllability of this. So I think that coupled with a decent radio set, and without any dead band. Yeah, no dead band. This is great. This has got so much power. Love it. Yeah. Right, so yeah, now onto the drone. All right, I'm going to try not to put it in the tree. Yeah. Um, no, this is good. It's a great little drone. It's got heaps of power. Um, and very very precise in where it's going i'm going to take it up the back see what the vtx is like so i'm way up behind us now and there's loads oh i'm just dropping trevor's plugged in yeah, right next trevor's to you. Yep. right next to me trying so, to sabotage our reviews yeah here. so no this is good i'm going to come back to us there we go down under here yeah this is brilliant Stu. it's very okay. very controllable um, all right, what do you think for a beginner's kit? Let's, let's oh, have look, a thing. Now you've got your summary. So you've got your drone. You like the drone? I love it. This is really good. Okay, and the goggles? Um, look, good if you've never flown FPV before. Um, so I think it's an introduction. It gives you a sense of what it's like. But I reckon you'll get pretty, uh, pretty bored of them after a while. And especially if you go and try a decent pair. You'll want to have a decent pair in no time you because upgrade. because the difference is chalk and cheese. But they do give you an idea of what it's like to fly with goggles on. A bit of a toe in the water of what FPV is like. In summary, um, as a package, great for a gift if you want to give it to a kid or a um, someone who wants to get into the hobby. I think it's a really good starting package. You certainly want to have a play around with the PIDs in beta flight to get it flying right. But you know, with a bit of time you can certainly grow put a decent if, okay. controller in your hand and it will be a fantastic package all right last last thing would you if you'd never flown fbv would you find this more would you enjoy this little kit if someone gave it to you to fly around i think i'd love it is it better than your first walkira runner drone uh, don't, let's not even go there because okay. that walkira runner flew away on its own okay all right nice. hey would you have liked to start with this than versus what you started with yeah oh, definitely way? definitely this is brilliant all i really right. And look, the hobby's come a long way since I started, and uh, Gee, I think this, this is, is a like testament stone to it. Stone ages when you were doing it, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. Too easy. All right, thanks, Cheers. Tony. You can plug in next to his head now, Trevor. Let's see if we can knock him out. This is a great little drone. Oh, I'm looking at amps, not volts. Where's the volts? Are you getting any break up? 6.7 volts. Are you, are you getting break up? No, nah, not really. Okay. I I, uh, I flew up behind us around the back, and I got a little bit when Trev was plugged in next to me. He but... was just waving in front of you. All right, come in and land. All right, here we go. Get out of it. Uh... You know, I really enjoyed that. That's a great little drone. It's got a nice little frame. Uh, brilliant camera. Um, run cam. Yeah, run cam nano. Yeah, this is this a, this is a bit of a toy, a bit of a gimmick, but it works. Okay. And you know, if you're little, you got little face kids. I think that'll be a really good start. But they'll soon see the difference if they put a decent pair of goggles on. Sure. Or well, I guess the price um, difference too. Yeah. You know, you're looking at 140, yeah. 150 bucks. Yeah. I, for ten batteries, that. I thought the controller was going to be better than a a basic kids toys one. It is, but marginally. Okay. Um you fly on that with a slight tweak on the pids and it's worlds apart it's so Otherwise. much better on a decent transmitter but great introduction pack for uh, someone that's never flown before right, oh, nice. brilliant thanks, thanks tony all right so there it is there's my flight footage and the little infield review of the Ishii novice kit and i guess now we're back in the studio that brings us on to the pros the cons the good points and also some of its shortcomings we'll go through that and i'm going to discuss too if you're going to be picking this up a couple little things can make a huge difference to your flight experience because out of the box there's some easy tweaks that you can do at home that are going to make it much more enjoyable and you saw just how well this thing was flying uh once we'd set it up correctly and bound it to a different radio all that sort of stuff but overall let's talk about about the actual drone itself. We'll do the three parts, the drone, the uh, goggles, and the radio, and you can see I've already modded mine just a little bit just here. The drone itself, the Ishii Novice Drone, I don't think they sold this thing separately, but it is pretty fantastic. When you look at the kit overall, for $145, I'm gonna say 100 bucks of it goes on this bad boy because it flies nice, it's got plenty of power, it's got a beautiful camera in there, it can take 1S or a 2S, and overall, I really like whatever plastic they're using as well. It's gonna hold up nicely indoors if you're bouncing off the wall TV. You don't don't have to worry about bumping into things you can see i'll put some footage at the end of this flying around indoors uh i wasn't too worried and i was flying around my little toddler my daughter so uh yeah this thing overall the drone 10 out of 10 i really like the ishii novice 
talking about the goggles, and I guess you're really talking about for, they're probably 20 bucks each, 20 bucks for a radio, 20 bucks for a pair of goggles. These, I'm just, they're about what you'd expect for, they're probably better than what you'd expect for $20. I don't think there's any other $20 FPV goggles on the market, but they you are going to be able to see, but they are uncomfortable, they're going to leave a mark on your face, there's no sliders, they're low resolution, but if you want to jump in and at least try FPV, it is still more than capable. I would have been fine starting off with a kit like this, and I think for a lot of people, jumping in at that tiny barrier of the price point of, I guess, you know, the $145 for the entire kit, it does make sense. They've got buttons on here, you can charge it by USB, I like all that sort of stuff, but you're going to probably want to be upgrading these very soon, or if you're getting them for somebody else, they make some okay ride-along goggles, but they're going to be nothing compared to the more expensive things out there, so that... For, I, I guess you can't complain too much for the price, just don't expect too much. And then, one part for me that is a bit hit and miss is the little radio. I feel like this is where they could do a little bit better and uh, I've actually even modded it since then and I'm gonna put some footage at the end of this where I am flying around indoors using this radio and once we've done a few, we've worked on a little bit with the, the I guess, fix, fixing up some of the shortcomings, it was better than it first was in the park. Now the first thing I'd, I would suggest to do is, I actually took some of these little standoffs right here and uh, I drilled them out with a 5mm drill bit and then I just kind of hot glued them in here. Of course hot glue is not perfect but that made the sticks just, it extended the sticks just a little bit longer so that meant I've got more throw on here, more control when I'm trying to fly this thing around doing those precise movements. Movements. One problem is, and uh, I'll see if I can put a little bit of a video on the screen, I'm not too sure how I edit this in, but you move the sticks ever so slightly, I'll put it at the end actually, you move the sticks ever so slightly and in the very centers, because it is just a cheap remote, there is a tiny bit of dead band or something where the remote is not going to register those tiny minute, move, minute, minute movements, that's a tricky sentence to say, those tiny movements in the middle of the stick. So you might be trying to correct a tiny bit, which uh, look for me and my type of flying, that's what I'm doing all the time. But for most novice spots, they're probably going to be moving around a lot more. This does help, but those tiny movements in the middle of the sticks, they don't get picked up, which means you can be tilting, you know, you want to, you want to turn, you want to turn, you want to turn, nothing's happening, boom, it's turning quite a lot. So that part I found was a a little bit frustrating, but what we also did to rectify that especially on the yaw axis. This thing had like a thousand degrees per second in the yaw, which is absolutely ridiculous. Eshin, what are you doing? We cranked it down to about 600 and it was much better. I'll put our rates on the screen as well. And it was much more docile to fly around indoors, much more controllable. And you can also put it on 1S as well. So coupling that, fixing that issue between the very twitchy radio and a very twitchy rate setup. If you make the sticks a little bit longer, it makes it a little bit smoother. Lower the rates on here and you can fly it around indoors. So I'm happy to say my first impressions out in the field stock out of the box. I wasn't really the biggest fan, uh, but coming home, making the sticks a little bit longer, lowering the rates, I can see for 20 bucks, look, you're still going to have an okay experience. Of course, look, it's nowhere near the other jumper radios or anything like that, which costs more than this entire FPV setup in its entirety. But uh, overall, Look for the price, and I think if you do those little mods, you're gonna be off to the races. Have, well, maybe not off to the races, but you are gonna be racing around, having a lot of fun. A beauty thing, the beautiful thing is this drone, you're gonna enjoy that, whether you get a high quality radio, a high pair of goggles, something like that. This is gonna be a perfect little entry kit that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy, but don't get it thinking it's gonna be perfect, because look, there are some shortcomings when it comes to the radio. The radio, which you wanna mod out yourself and you know make the sticks a little bit longer, and also the goggles, they're only gonna go so fast. It's not going to be long before you want to upgrade these, but for some people, uh, they just might want to get their toes wet and try out FPV first. So anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think. Drop your comments down below. There's two versions. They're the one that comes with 10 batteries and the one that comes with just two batteries. I would recommend get the 10 battery ones because trust me, you're going to be wanting to flying this thing all the time. There's nothing worse when I bought my first ever Hubson X drone. This is like four or five years ago. I can remember I bought one battery with it. I'd plug it in. I'd fly around for an amazing two minutes and then I would have to wait like half an hour or however long it used to take back in the day to charge it up. Do yourself a favor. It wasn't long before I went and bought more packs. Do yourself a favor. Buy some more batteries or get the version that comes with 10 of them. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Drop your comments down below what you think about this kit. I think it's uh, not too bad value actually if you, with all things considered, especially for the price. Subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying.
Right, I'm just gonna have to forgive this dodgy camera work right here, but I'm just trying to show people the problem with the remote. So we've got our, three, you know, our axes up here in the receiver tab. It's all bound up, but check this out. Let's see if I can get this in shot a little bit. But you move the sticks. Let's do it this way. You move the sticks and keep an eye on the red bar. Nothing's actually happening until you get to a certain bit, and then, bam, it starts to move. So you've got all this bit in the middle where nothing is happening and then you get to a certain point and it kicks in almost like it's got dead band but it actually doesn't because it's just a cheap remote